Hi, my name is Ari, and we're going to be reading in Genesis 3, verse 15 today. And it says, And I will make enemies of you and the woman, and of your offspring and her descendant. He shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. And so, a little bit of context of where we are in the passage. We're in the first book of the Bible, and right now, sin has entered the world, and God is speaking directly to the serpent and Adam and Eve about the consequences of sin and just the curses on humanity that are now entering. And so he's speaking directly to the serpent here and he's saying to him that there's going to be a person, woman's offspring, who will come and strike his head and defeat the serpent altogether. And I love this because this is the first telling, the first clear telling of the gospel. And so we already see here that God has a redemptive plan for humanity And in the New Testament, we find out that the seed that he's referring to is Jesus. And so he's already clear about the hope and redemption we have in Christ. And we see this and he's talking about the first coming of Jesus. And we as believers know that there's a second coming and we anxiously await that. But this specific verse is referring to that. And so we see later in the New Testament that Jesus is born of a woman. He's fully God and fully man, and he's on earth and dies on the cross to defeat the serpent and defeat the penalty of sin, and he does that for us. And as I was reading this, this there's a lot that goes on in this chapter because we see sin is entering the world, a lot of chaos, a lot of fear, and I just kind of sat with it for a minute because as I read this, I feel like I've missed so many times in this passage the impact of this specific verse in 15, like the power that the Lord is so clearly already laying out the gospel so early on. And I've missed it so many times by just reading this and only focusing on the curses, the intensity of child labor pain, like all these things that are coming now because of sin. And that just kind of resonated with me because I feel like in my own life, I can focus on the circumstances and the chaos around me that I so clearly miss like the gospel and the way that God is working in my life. And so this was just convicting to me to just read this verse and really read it and understand like I've missed this so many times and God just so clearly laid it out right at the beginning. And it's so sweet to see that. And so during this Advent season, um, I just think that we can just use this as a reminder of the hope that we have in Christ. Um, God just so clearly laid it out from the beginning Um, And we can find encouragement in that, knowing that from the beginning, his plan hasn't changed. It's not going to change. And he's an unchanging God. And I just have found it such an encouragement to just read this and know like there's a hope and that person is Christ. And we can find peace, rest, um, love, and just in the person of Christ and who he is. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that you've just shown us, God. And we thank you that we can find hope in the one person that is Christ um, every day and in this Christmas season as we reflect and think about the first coming, God. So we thank you so much, again, just for who you are um, and just this person and this hope that we have in you. Amen. Amen.